Welcome back, everybody. Yay. I'm Jamie. I'm Justina. And this is Just, Just so, so You, you know. know. Today, guys, we are going to be talking about the environment. We're going to be talking about what you're eating mm-hmm. and how the two correlate. Mm. It's y'all's favorite topic. Everyone loves to debate on this. Everyone loves to come at the vegans when we talk about animal agriculture. They don't want to see that it collides with what's happening with the environment. It's so crazy. Right. But before we get there, we have had a pretty long week. How are you? I am exhausted. This is another one of those early morning episodes. So if I act a little crazy, (laughs) don't come at me. She's on her third cup of coffee. Actually, this is my first. I tried to. I tried to. You know, that sex episode really embarrassed me. So I said, no three <laughs> cups of coffee. It's not It's not working for me. Yeah, definitely go listen to that, you guys. But yeah, the week was really long, so I'm exhausted. But I, I'm, I feel good. I feel really good. Yeah. We went to a sanctuary upstate, Catskill yes. Animal Sanctuary. And then we also met some friends in Woodstock, which yeah. is really nice. It was really nice. We just didn't stop. Yeah. Like, every time we looked down on, on our phones, I was like, oh my gosh. It's time to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, we definitely had a good time. And this morning was kind of like me getting back into my routine. I went to my yoga class and then I ran out of yoga and I was like, I have to be at the podcast studio in like 45 minutes. So I went on the train. I brought my laptop, my makeup bag, mm-hmm. and I'm like doing my makeup on the train. <laughs> and my the top of my little foundation bottle oh, no. flew off across the subway. And some woman help me picked it up and like tossed it back to me and she I, tossed it back to you she was like hey it's like one yeah. of those new york commercials <laughs> I'm like i'm so sorry <laughs> you know and then i noticed she was wearing a recycling shirt oh and i was like this is the perfect segue into our episode today you're like we get each other lady well thank you Uh-oh. i i i asked her are you vegan? As she's handing me you the top You asked this lady no. <laughs> at like 8.30 in the morning, are you vegan? That is the last thing a New Yorker wants to hear in the no, morning. I, I didn't. I didn't. I should okay. have. But um, it's, it, I'm interested to know. Like she's right. an environmentalist. She recycles or wears shirts that says she recycles. But <laughs> what did she eat for breakfast? What? Okay. So you categorize people by the types of t-shirts they wear. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're wearing a recycling shirt. You care about the environment. That is not how it works. I wish. Uh, but it's not. Well, maybe she'll just have to listen to this episode then because yeah. who knows? But I thought it was like the perfect segue into this. Mm. So we definitely have an un- unhinged episode for you guys. We have Crystal coming to talk to us later today. She's an awesome guest and she's going to answer some of our more pressing questions that I won't be able to cover throughout this podcast. Mm-hmm. But before we get there, so Justina's exhausted, Justina's dying, but not only is she Whoa, dying. Whoa, don't you dare but, say that I'm dying. But the planet is dying too. We're all dying. Do you see where I was going with that? Yeah, yeah, but you, you know, words are powerful. Okay? Work with me, honey. Okay, okay, sorry, Work sorry, with sorry. me. Okay, what are some facts about the planet and maybe, you know, diet change that you already know? Well, I know that we, wait, in what regard? In just like uh, certain foods that may be better for the planet, maybe worse, just generally speaking. Well, I know that we're destroying the ocean. Are you talking like, about overfishing? Overfishing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like the population of animals. Yeah, guys, there's some techniques dying. that these industries use where they take these huge nets that span for miles long and they use bottom trawlers to just basically pick up everybody that's in the ocean that's in terrifying. that area. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. I, I hate watching those videos i don't know why like the sea creatures like they kill me because that that was the area that took me the longest Mm, to click me too so when i when i see these animals coming out of the ocean i'm like wow i i devalued you for so long and Mm -hmm. i i i I guess something in me like fights harder Mm -hmm. when people talk about like yeah. The ocean animals, like they're insignificant. I'm like, no, they're not. Well, I thought like you too. Like it's horrible. In terms of scale, one could say it is the worst because there's the most amount of sea animals that are being taken out of the oceans. And not only are you catching the 
type of fish that you're trying to give and sell to people to eat, but you're also catching dolphins, right. whales, turtles, right. and all sorts of other sea life in that process. So, okay, that's a great fact that, you know, that the oceans are being depleted and, yeah. and that kind of also ties into pollution. And, right. You know, you have these runoff, the runoff from the factory farms mm-hmm. that mm. are going into our waters, right. which is really, really awful. And the microplastics that then end up in the fish that then people eat. needs to be. So another fact that I have for you guys is that animal agriculture is the leading man-made cause of climate catastrophe as it's responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than the entire global transportation system mm. transportation system whoa it's number one so yeah so it's it's well not, it, some people say it's number two but it's up there it's more than what i'm trying to say is that the animal agriculture industry ex, it puts out more greenhouse gas emissions than planes trains cars than the entire mm. transportation system okay i'm so glad you said that because that's like something that like on social media people are like oh yeah you say you care about animals and the planet yet you're flying here and doing this and i'm yeah. like okay well now i could say it's not as harmful as that so right. it's like it's not about being perfect you guys like yeah. obviously we're caught up in a system that if you walk down the street you're doing something wrong just because that's how our society has been built but if you just stop eating animals you're contributing to decreasing our negative impact on the world right like i I guess what i'm trying to say is you could take shorter showers yeah you could bike to work right but at the end of the day if you're still eating that burger or that chicken sandwich that you're doing more destruction you're doing way more destruction so every day a person who goes vegan Mm -hmm. saves 100 saves 1100 gallons of water Mm. and 30 square feet of forested land wow that's crazy yeah which is amazing thank you like what you have total control over it's what what you eat and what you buy so it's like the simplest thing we can do to contribute to doing the right thing at an individual level right right everybody wants to blame the government and blame everybody else but not take accountability for themselves and i I went to an environmental protest a few months back and Mm -hmm. i remember going up to people and interviewing them and asking them why are you here what are you doing here and they were fighting against fossil fuels Mm. and then when i asked them how do you personally help this problem they all wanted to just point at the government and be like it's policy 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 but then the question is well why is the government or why are these policies put into place and the reason being is because people use demanding it yeah Yeah. people are demanding it so the same goes with the animal agriculture sector so if we know that a plant-based diet is the most green and the most environmentally friendly then you would think environmentalists would transition over to that instead of fighting it right. and at this protest i'm like watching people eating hot dogs it's crazy the disconnect is so real but yeah. i mean i i don't know if i've said it on the podcast but i've struggled with my vegan journey since i was 15 so like i get it hopefully by the end of this episode they will be able to make their own decisions but right. another fact that i have is about beef mm. and cows and how beef by far is the most climate damaging mm. food studied. Yeah. And honestly, like the competition was not even close. Wow. So Our World and Data, which is a great website, it's peer reviewed studies. There's data that shows that producing a kilogram of beef contributed over 22 times more to mm. climate crisis than producing a kilogram of rice and 60 wow. times more than wheat. Crazy. Like that yeah. that statistic, that number is outrageous and mm-hmm. people are just not connecting with that. Yeah. And I think that we are starting to slowly see people waking up and thinking, oh, red meat isn't so sustainable. Like, Right, right. People, That's like the first thing people say, like, oh, yeah. I cut out red meat. But now more than ever, we're starting to see a pushback from the beef industry. Oh, yeah. Where they are fighting that and actually trying to put climate friendly labels on beef products really yes climate friendly oh yeah how is that possible how does that how does that work right no they they'll put that this was carbon neutral or they'll put you know organic and free range or grass fed and yeah it's not better and it's a lie liar liar people are even starting to use plant-based as a label and then i'm like i see beeswax or honey in it and i'm like this is not plant based. Stop right. trying to be us. Right, right. If you want to be us, then be, be us. us. Okay. 
It's true. I, yes. I hate the beeswax thing. It's, it's always it's a problem. everywhere. So always look at your ingredients. Yeah. But kind of adding on to what I was saying, since 2018, the National Cattle Beef Association, they hired top creative agencies, the same agencies that are representing uh, fossil fuel industries, mm -hmm. and they are helping to devise strategies for... Like advertising? Yeah, for, for confusing the public. So do you know why, in particular, cows are worse for the environment like one of the reasons they're farts and burps <laughs> okay right yes they're bigger so they so take up more space everybody thinks it's the farts and i think people focus on the farts because it's funny but it, it's actually majority the burps okay and part of the problem is that each burp it releases methane so methane <laughs> is a planet warming gas that's 28 times more powerful than carbon dioxide over 100 years. That is crazy. Yeah. Cows got that stanky breath. Like, yeah. ah. <laughs> like, just, just you're like, like, whoa, <laughs> relax, buddy. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> so you have any other facts that you wanted to add before we move on? We watched a documentary called The Smell of Money, mm. and that documentary really shook me because I saw directly how these farms were affecting these neighborhoods specifically people of color and they just couldn't get out of it like they don't have the means to move and nor should they nor should they well the, it was it was hog farms H that hog farm they were th what happens is the hogs produce so much waste yeah but then they go into this waste pool the cis and then pools. the cesspool cis and then pools. they spray it over the land to get rid of it and then what ends up happening is there's quite literally spraying shit. shit all over people's houses and yeah. they die young from cancer yeah they have all asthma. these lung diseases it's like a really big issue that we don't even think about yeah and just to talk a little bit about the waste like every minute seven million pounds of excrement are produced by animals raised for food just in the u.s i believe that so u.s livestock produces 116 thousand <gasps> pounds of waste per second to put that into perspective which is enough to cover New York City, San Francisco, and Tokyo. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of shit. That's a lot of <sighs> shit. It sounds awful. Give a shit about the masses amounts of shit. Go so ahead, continue the facts. The question really is, why should we care so much about this? So we're experiencing right now very powerful hurricanes mm. that are wiping out villages, wiping out people, intense rain, flooding, droughts. We have record temperatures. I mean, the planet really is warming. We're watching glaciers fall. And I know. The signs of this climate catastrophe are very apparent. And these are things that we're already experiencing. So you can only right. imagine, you know, in 20 years from now when our kids are around and then when they have kids. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's sad that the future generations are going to be the ones experiencing some of the worst of climate change. And they're not the ones who caused it. I think a lot of people don't realize how their food choices every day are fueling the climate crisis. Right. And that's why we really wanted to talk about this today, because it's really hard when you're starting to see labels on dairy products and, and beef products that are promoting sustainability when there's really nothing sustainable about it. That's crazy. When you compare those options with a plant-based option, mm -hmm. the plant-based option wins in every single category. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we look at the massive amounts of grain and water fed to farmed animals to then we kill them, we process them, we store their body parts. It's a mm. lot of energy. Ugh. And then we're we're going to these COP28 events and the topic of plant-based is not really discussed or it's it's harder to even bring it up. It's like, how could you go to an environmental protest and not talk about animal agriculture as being one of the leading problems when it right. comes to climate catastrophe? Mm. And so when we look at food systems mm -hmm. and the effects on the world we are looking at land use yeah we are looking at fresh water biodiversity deforestation so these are i'm going to just mention a few things that if you guys are talking to a meat eater and you want to bring up facts about the environment these are some key things to note and to know okay. note take out your pen and papers or your iphone okay and get on your notes okay so food um, systems use half of the world's total habitable land. Why? They're, okay, this is gonna sound really messed up, but 
those animals are in like factories. Why do they have to use habitable land? The reason being is because the food that we have to grow to feed the 80 mm. billion plus animals is massive. Got so it. we are clearing forests to feed animals to then yeah. eat. It's extremely inefficient because not only are we doing that, but then these animals are eating this massive amount of food and then the amount of calories that they produce are a lot less. They're horrible calorie converters. Ugh. So I'll, I'll actually give you the numbers right here if you want to know. Tell me. I want to know. So for beef production, it's estimated that cows typically convert around 6 to 10 of the gross energy in their feed. So that, that means that for every 100 calories of feed okay. consumed by a cow, only 6 to 10 are converted into beef. So think about how much food they're eating. <laughs> Too much math. Though. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> just think about it in general terms the amount of food that they're eating right. and then the amount of beef that they're giving i guess is the amount of food that then we take so the point is is that if humans were just to directly eat, eat the, the plants, plants yeah we would have more food in fact we have food we have enough food to feed over 10 billion people yet we're still facing world hunger and starvation and so the problem is not having enough food the problem is where the food is going Right. And so we're growing and crops. We're growing crops to feed farmed animals to then kill. And using Freaking a twisted. ton of land. So back to kind of the broader picture of what I was saying. So not only are we um we're we're you know feeding them massive amounts of food, but also um the amount of greenhouse gas emissions are massive that the agriculture industry contributes to. And that number is that the animal agriculture industry contributes to about one third of all greenhouse gas emissions. So in the beginning of the episode, I was right. saying that How it's much of it? yeah. up there with the transportation sector. I mean, one third is a lot. Yes. It's a lot. So also, animal agriculture is responsible for 77% of agricultural land use and 50% of the world's harvest of crops. It's super important to note that we are taking so much land and having to clear the land either to graze cattle or to grow food for the cattle. So right. not only are meat eaters responsible for the intentional deaths of farmed animals mm -hmm. but they're also responsible for all the deaths of the wildlife that had mm -hmm. to be cleared for those pastures <sighs> these facts are out there i remember right. the first time i learned about them was in a documentary called cowspiracy mm, i Anderson. still haven't seen that one it's a great film guys if you really want to like go deep into this and start to understand this that that was the first step that i took and mm. started learning about it but um i i I, I think it's important to note that now we're seeing a big pushback from the animal agriculture industry and they've actually introduced a lot of greenwashing tactics to mm -hmm. make consumers feel better about their urge to eat animals. Yeah. The, the U.S. Department of Agriculture is quite literally introducing quote unquote climate friendly beef certifications. <laughs> and it's a, crazy. It's a program. Yeah. And it, it's a program which allows companies like Tyson to market a burger made from cow flesh as a planet friendly option, even if the products still have a higher than average emission. Have you heard the term regenerative agriculture? I have. That's another term that environmentalists like to use a lot. So when I was actually at that climate protest, a lot of people were saying to me, I only buy local. I only buy from regeneratively raised farms. But what I, does that mean? What does it mean exactly? I've heard the term. Yes. But I obviously am so far removed from that. I don't really know what it means. Yes. So it's, it's a term that's been debunked many times over and over again. It was introduced by uh, a few. There was a book called *The Omnivores*, Devel uh, *The Omnivores Dilemma* by Michael Pollan. There was also uh, a term by Alan Savory, and okay. what it means is it's a method of farming that aims to try and work like with the environment and with the animals to mimic nature so back in the day you had lots of different predators and you had lots of different animals that would c coexist and right. surely they would eat the grass or eat 
some of the vegetation and then they would die and then their bodies would be decomposed decomposed into the soil. And so the method of farming is trying to help soil health and they use a term called carbon sequestering. So they're saying that by this method of regenerative agriculture that you can farm animals in a sustainable way that that lowers carbon emissions. Okay. However... (laughs) It has been debunked many times, and one of the main problems with this is that this is not a system that is suitable to feed a planet of meat eaters. Mm. This is it's it's impossible. We right. actually don't have enough land on planet Earth to have everybody eating grass fed meat. Just stop it. Just well, stop it. The best thing would be an alternative to regenerative agriculture is if we allowed forests to rewild. Right. If we cut that land and only had part of that land used for growing vegetables or beans, legumes, peas, right. and then took a, a lot more of that land to rewild it and allow wildlife to come back and allow right. if we want to talk about carbon sequestering that's the best thing we could do for the environment right we don't we're not solving anything right and part of the reason why is because we have the beef industry and animal agriculture pushing back and confusing the public right so there's this new program called masters of beef advocacy oh and it's God. where they actually hire an army of influencers to and and activists to help amplify their message so they'll actually go in they'll use tiktok influencers to help increase sales they'll go in and they'll they have a program yeah where they teach people all of this misinformation it's quite crazy. literally and they make it so that if they see something online or some type of big media against the beef industry they are able to snap back real quick so scary they're genetically modifying cows to produce less methane now and that's their new selling how point and heck? tactic how they've they've i guess bred them over time to create a cow that does not emit as much methane which is <laughs> and i'm sure people are like oh it's okay i eat cows that were modified to not burp as much i'm like no Do, are you listening to this and then when you ask them where they went for dinner last night they're like oh mcdonald's yeah i went to in and out yeah. my favorite spot it's like ew i've never been to in and out thank no, god no, i'm proud of that I've, I've been but i don't recommend no Grassy. And so, you know, currently this technology, it's working. The They're they are getting billions, I want to say, in, in funds. Yeah. And, and they are, and they're getting so much money and support on yeah. these new cows. When the fact of the matter mm. is, it's like the most sustainable thing that we can do is to not eat animals at all and to just switch to plants. Nice. However, one of the comebacks to this would be that in order to scale this, you know, to scale this production of methane reducing cows, that it's not proven that that can work. Mm. It's not proven that that can actually be effective across right. the globe. And it still doesn't, it doesn't talk about the other impacts that are still damaging to the environment, uh-huh. you know, from the resources used with the cows. And so it's like, okay, you're, you might be helping in one area, but then there's still all these other issues that exist. And so we could just get rid of this whole problem. Right. It's like what I said. It's like yeah. we're coming up with solutions that are not resolving the issue. It's insane. And I'm sure that that's probably costing a lot of money. Okay. So <laughs> all of this being said, even if there was some idyllic world where cows could produce less methane and, mm-hmm. you know, chickens also are an issue and, and hog waste and all these other things, even if there was an idyllic world, their impact would still be greater than a plant-based diet. And we can't really call them climate saviors because they're not. So up next, guys, we have an amazing guest. All right, guys, next up, we are introducing Crystal Salimi. She is the community fundraising manager at PETA. Hi, nice to see you guys. Hi. Uh, Can you just let the audience know a little bit about what you do specifically at PETA? Yeah, so I do community fundraising. I I would say it's one of the funner positions um, in animal rights. I get to work with local businesses who want to partner with PETA to do fundraising events, Um, We have, for example, an upcoming PETA pack run in the New York City half marathon, where we have a group of runners 
who are running for animals and fundraising. So I uh, get to do a lot of different things across the board pertaining to community fundraising. That is so cool. I didn't know that there were runs for uh, animal awareness and agriculture. Is that what you said? Sorry. Uh, just just for animal rights in general. So yeah. the New York City Marathon is a big marathon, but they offer different charity uh, charity slots. So PETA is registered as a registered charity with the New York City Half Marathon. And we have a group of runners who are dedicating their runs to PETA so people can donate uh, to their runs. Oh, that's help so them. I always yeah. wanted to like run in a big race and have a huge sign that was like, you think vegans are crazy? Bitch, you eat body parts. Or Let's like, do it. <laughs> Let's some, do it. Yeah, some like big sign. And I'm like running with it. And I want to be faster than everybody else. <laughs> I mean, you can have that goal. I know I will not be the fastest. We have but to be the vegans though and show people. We'll be the vegans, obviously. But I didn't know that. That's really, really cool. I'm sure a yeah. lot of people didn't know about that as well. So what personally attracted you to the issue that we're talking about today when it comes to the environment and and diet change yeah so i have been a vegetarian i was a vegetarian for 20 years before i went vegan and like so many vegetarians i thought the animals aren't killed for for cheese so why stop eating cheese right and that is completely false information in fact the cows are killed and the, the cows who are used for dairy live very short lifespans. They're forcibly impregnated over and over in their short, miserable lives. And so uh, for me, when I really began to understand the impact of dairy, I, my mind was blown and I switched to being vegan 15 years ago. So uh, it, just like you had said earlier, you're vegan for the animals. I'm vegan for the animals. Mm -hmm. But Throughout the course, you know, 35 years now or 30 some odd years now, vegetarian to vegan, I've learned so much more about why we need to be vegan for the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, for all the reasons that you mentioned, I mean, it's just, we are we are beyond the tipping point, we're, we're there. So what we do now, each individual, what each individual person does now is going to be the, the outcome, will determine the outcome of what planet we're going to live on in terms of what we eat. What would you say to people, because I've had that have had this discussion and talking point before, what would you say to people that say, well, it's too late now? That's, you know, I know a lot of us feel that way because, you know, we're living, like I lived in California. I watched the change in California. I lived in Spain, which is just becoming a desert. And now I live on the East Coast. And feeling the effect of climate change. It's not too late. We all have the power. I know it sounds so cliche, but we all have the power to turn this back. And to your point, you know, let mother nature, let mother nature solve it. If we all were to switch over to the vegan diet right now, it would be amazing the effect that we would see on a global scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you I just get emotional because like, I don't talk about like most of us we don't we don't talk about our planet like it's a living being like it's a living entity and it's so sad because it's homing us and it gives us life and like such beautiful experiences and it kills me that we forget about her so much you bring right. up a, a really good point too I mean it starts with education. Everything right. starts with education. PETA has a teach kind program where we try to introduce compassionate education to young people because, mm -hmm. you know, all of the things that you have been talking about, about the lobbying groups and about, you know, the messages we are fed. Right. I mean, it's, we have to see beyond that. It really takes, you know, being, being inquisitive and being, you know, aware, being self-aware to like, want to find that truth. And, you know, to our young people, I mean, they are, they are the future, right? And they need to have this information and what, what we're feeding them in our education system is so important. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's how, that's how respect for the planet starts. It's definitely, yeah. it's a process. And, you know, guys, we're not saying tomorrow you have to go into this and bring your own bags to the grocery store <laughs> and, you know, um, 
turn only take a two minute shower yeah. and and not and sail across the the ocean to get to your next destination <laughs> as opposed walk, to flying. Walk to go see your mother <laughs> sixteen hours away. And actually walk. Yeah, we're, we're we're not we're trying to say do this in a practical way. And the first big step that you can take that will make a huge impact is going plant based and and going vegan. So what are tactics that PETA employs to get people thinking about the environment and climate change? Are there any fun demonstrations or Tell me about that. We do everything. And you both mentioned it earlier. You talked about how people are moved in different ways. Right. Some people are very empathetic. And some people, when they see the suffering, that is what happens. There's the video, and I've, a lot of people have seen it, of the, the calf being separated from the mother. And the mother cow is running after the calf, screaming, screaming. It. I mean, I have chills even just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it makes me very emotional, that video. And a lot of people for them, that visual is enough. Right. That cow wants to be with his mother. That milk was not intended for us, right? right? That baby has gone off to slaughter. I mean, any woman who has a child can relate to like not wanting to be separated from her child. And why does that, why do we draw a boundary at a different species, right? Mm -hmm. So PETA employs, you know, just things that are that are happening we just show you the truth we have right. undercover investigations where you know we we have people who get into these far farms and places we're not we're not altering the content we're just showing you what it is right we're just showing you what yeah it is. um as you mentioned we have provocative demonstrations yeah. where sometimes you don't make the you don't make the connection until you see something like a, a human being being carved up in different, you know, we've had like barbecue a baby kind of things. Like you wouldn't barbecue a baby, would you? Just to like, just to, again, it's that concept of speciesism. Like, mm -hmm. why is it okay to do this to a cow when you wouldn't do it to a dog or you wouldn't right. do it to a child? Um, we will we will serve vegan food. We'll go to barbecue festivals and we'll bring along, you know, vegan burgers and say, here, try this. What do you think? And people are more often than not say, wow, this is really good. This is better than the real thing. And I right. don't even know that the environmental impact of that is like, mm. you can switch to this and be a savior for our planet. We got to try all different sorts of tactics. And, you yeah. know, right now we're seeing a big pushback from the meat and dairy industries and a few of those terms being the climate friendly beef programs, quote unquote. And we're also seeing regenerative farming becoming a topic of discussion and environmentalists saying that they only buy local or grass fed. Yeah. How should we respond, respond to, that, to yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, you, you both mentioned this earlier, the humane washing and the green washing is, is meant to appeal to consumers to make us feel like it's okay because this is quote unquote sustainable or this is quote unquote, you know whatever the the quote is right. whatever done the, humanely yeah and it's just not there's you know i mean when people say oh this is cage free i have friends say oh i only buy cage free eggs and i'm like oh if you knew what that actually looked like yeah. i mean the the standards are so minimal maybe they get a sliver of sunlight there's a crack in the roof you know i mean what defines quote unquote sustainable and not sustainable it's a it's a joke mm -hmm. and no matter what form of you know consumption you're doing as far as animals go it is the animal welfare standards are completely they're just not there they're just not there all beings want to live right all beings want to be with their families all beings deserve the right to live their lives peacefully. So and in terms we, of the environment, I mean, they all end up at the slaughterhouse, right? Either way, which is where vegans have the problem with it. But in terms of the environment, how should we like, how should we fight back against these, these terms that make absolutely no logical sense? We just have to keep preaching and showing the truth through yeah. all the tactics that PETA is using. I mean, we have, we have to be the voice. I mean, you know, it's what you said, like, we're, we're at a point where, you know, it's, it's hard to be nice about it now. Right. Because it we really is. Time. We don't have the time. So it's hard to sugarcoat and say, oh, it's okay if you, you know, gradually do whatever. Actually, it's not. Actually, we don't have the time and that the planet is being destroyed and the land is being destroyed and the rainforest and the, you know, everything. Is <laughs> ah! <laughs> so 
How, what do you know about the impact with the dairy industry? Well, the, the dairy and the beef industry go hand in hand. So the same statistic you were giving earlier about beef, it goes hand in hand with the dairy industry. Mm. Because what happens, as I mentioned, is, you know, a, a woman, a, a female cow lives in a tiny, you know, a tiny thing in her own feces, in her own ways. She is forcibly impregnated over and over again. Her babies are stolen. We steal the milk. She lives a fraction of her lifespan, then she's slaughtered, right? Until she's no longer productive. This is a women's right. This is a feminist issue, actually. Right. Um, and then the the cow, if a male, will go to slaughter. If mm -hmm. a female, then she will endure the same miserable life as her mother. So, the, I mean, these two industries. Beef Watch and Next beef. Girl. <laughs> Watch the Next Girl film. Watch the Next Girl. <laughs> Yeah. The, the two the two go hand in hand. Okay. So that's good to know. I guess how much how much is the individual consumer responsible for this problem? The individual consumer is 100% responsible. I know people don't people you know they're like, well, everybody's, you know, everybody's going this way, so this is the way I go. Fortunately for me, I've always marched to the beat of my own drum, and it sounds like for you both as well. Okay, yes. for us. But there are a lot of people who have a hard time, you know, going against the grain of, you know, where everyone else is going. And I just we have we have to be the ones because the lobbyists, the government, they are not there. They don't have our best interest. They have financial interests at heart. They don't have the planet's best interest at heart. They don't have human health interests at heart. We know that meat eating causes cancer, causes diabetes, mm -hmm. causes all these different diseases. And if you look at countries where the meat consumption is much lower, they don't suffer the same diseases on the scale that we do here in the US. Right. So I mean, they clearly have no interest in our well being in our health or in our planet. It's the almighty dollar. Yeah, exactly. They're only producing these products because people are buying it. So we as the consumers need to stand up and say, we don't want this any anymore. Right. We want products that are kinder to the planet and the animals. Right. So what are some solutions, tips or advice that you can offer to our audience to help them become more in line with uh, their in environmentally friendly goals? Yeah, I mean, you you said it. There's no such thing as a meat eating environmentalist, right? So if you want to identify yourself as an environmentalist, cut out the meat, cut out the dairy, cut out the fish, cut it all up. It doesn't only pertain to the food that you're consuming, but also the clothes that you wear. Right. The wool, the impact. Even if even if you don't care about animals, the impact of the wool industry on our environment is devastating. Whoa. You know, the leather that people wear, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's always this conversation about, well, you know, vegan leather is uh, less sustainable. That's a lie. That's a lie. And the only reason it's lasting so long is because yeah. it's coated with chemicals, yeah. which you're putting on your body, by the way. Right. Come well, on. This was absolutely very helpful and enlightening. And we're so grateful for everything that you're doing. Thank, well, you. thank you both so much. We appreciate your time and everything you're doing thank you Ditto. thank you, thank so, you so much, much. So, I mean, I think after this episode, we can all recognize and realize that we each have the individual power to make great impact. Right. And simply choosing the vegan option is a major step that you can take. Right, y'all. And, and, and vegan food is delicious. I mean, the idea that we can gorge ourselves in steaks and and I used still, to. And still help the planet is bullshit. Yeah, and I used to. I used to really, like... I used to love the meat in my meal. Honestly, like if you want to reduce your food carbon imprint, you can reduce it by 73% mm. by going plant-based. And if everybody went vegan, you can also save up to 75% of land. That's so that amazing. We could reduce, in other words, global land use could be reduced by 75%, which is really awesome. And, you know, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of facts, a lot of right. figures. There's some really good resources out there that you could check out. If you go to ourworldindata.org, this is where a lot of these stats were pulled from. They go through land use, water use. They'll talk about calorie conversions from eat, you know animals and the food that they eat to then what's on your plate. Mm. It's I'm still you know learning a lot about this, and you could go down a whole path of looking into the government subsidies and our tax dollars and where it's going and all these different programs like the Masters and Beef Advocacy Program mm -hmm. where they're using influencers to promote 
their their industries. But uh, now that we're aware right. of these things, I think awareness is power. It Knowledge is, is power. Is. Knowledge is power. With great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we are thankful for you guys. You know yes. where to check out the podcast. It's called Just So You Know. J S Y K Y. No. <laughs> okay. J S Y K. J S Y K. You said it right. You can follow me at It's Jamie's Corner. You can follow me at Justina dot Justina. And definitely check out Peta. And until next time, guys, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Stop eating animals.